Warm greetings from JSS Academy of Higher Education and Research. Welcome to the virtual workshop on Carey's Risk Assessment. I'll be talking on Carey's Risk Assessment for infant and toddlers. As we all know, the early childhood case is the presence of one or more decayed, missing, or filled tooth surfaces in any of the primary teeth of child under age six. The prevalence of early childhood caries across the globe varies from less than 10% to more than 80 to 85%. The scenario is no different in, uh, when it comes to in India. The uh, recent systematic review on uh, prevalence of early childhood caries in India stated that uh, the overall prevalence is around 49.6% in India. When we check with the each state, the prevalence is again more than 40%. So any disease with the prevalence of more than disease, more than 40% uh, disease needs to be taken seriously and preventive measures need to be taken to combat that disease. To prevent the disease, the um, three steps, uh, uh, the disease can be prevented under three steps, basically through the primary prevention, secondary and the tertiary prevention. The ECC can be prevented at the uh, initial level by the establishment of infant oral health care. The American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry recognizes the infant oral health as a foundation upon which the preventive education and dental care must be built to enhance the opportunity for the child to have a lifetime free preventable oral diseases. So what do we do in infant oral health care? Basically, the, again, the American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry has given recommendation on implementation of infant oral health care. They, they have recommended the seven recommendation among which the first recommendation is advising the expectant or the new parents regarding the importance of their own health, oral health. The second, the second recommendation is the establishment of dental home that includes a proper medical history, dental examination, risk assessment and anticipatory guidance for the infants uh, by 12 months of age. So uh, I, I'm not going in detail with the other recommendations. Uh, um, here, uh, what is risk assessment basically? So risk assessment is a tool uh, which is research based that is used to identify the risk factors that causes a disease. The risk assessment procedures used in medical practice have generally sufficient data to accurately quantitate a person's disease susceptibility and allow for the preventive measures. But in dentistry, they are limited and sufficiently validated data are not available to determine whether the child belongs to a high caries risk or not. There are, however, there are various caries risk assessment tools as uh, uh, depicted in this table. However, only the two caries risk assessment tool, that is the karyogram and the camera has been validated in the clinical trials and the clinical uh, outcome studies. So basically, what does the caries risk assessment tools or caries risk assessment do? They fosters the treatment of the disease process instead of treating the outcome of the disease. For example, if uh, we can do the caries risk assessment at the age uh, of uh, one year or two year, we can, um, and if there is a deep, uh, then, uh, deep fissures, we can uh, treat the deep fissures through the pit and fissure sealant or the fluoride treatment rather than treating the disease once the caries has already established. The caries risk assessment also allows an understanding of the disease factors for a specific patients and aids in individualizing the preventive decisions. So this also helps in the uh, individualized preventive decision making. It individualizes, selects and determines the frequency of preventive and restorative treatment for a patient. Anticipates caries progression or stabilization and caries risk assessment also determines the different treatment plan options and tailors to the specific individualized self-management group. So the caries risk assessment models currently involve the combination of the factors like diet, fluoride exposure, susceptible host and microflora that interplay with the variety of social, cultural and behavioral factors. So the, what the most common caries risk factors, which includes in the caries risk assessment are low, flora, low salivary flow, visible plaque on the teeth, uh, high frequency sugar uh, consumption, presence of an appliance in the mouth, health challenges, sociodemographic factors, and cariogenic microflora. 
the tinin of classified these uh, risk factors into uh, the risk factors based on the social or behavioral risk factors based on the clinical and protective factors so the balance between these risk factors and the protective factors actually gives the um, uh, the idea that the child is belongs to a high risk category or a low risk category so under the risk factors uh, of uh, behavioral factors it uh, it's basically the parents lifetime poverty the child's uh, exposure to the uh, snacks or the sugar containing snacks and also the the diet factors then the mother's careless activity and whether the child belongs to any special health care needs so these are all the uh, social or the behavioral factors when the risk factors based on the clinical factors is presence of any defect enamel defect or vis visible cavities or visible plaque on the teeth the protective factors are like uh, the child is receiving the fluoridated drinking water the child is brushing with a fluoridated toothpaste and whether the child is receiving any uh, professional fluoride treatment so coming to the risk factors the recent systematic uh, review uh, stated there are around 123 risk factors um, belonging to these domains like socio -demo demography factors dietary factors di dietary domain oral hygiene breastfeeding practices and microflora so the systematic review concluded that the two strongest risk factors associated with early childhood caries are the presence of enamel defect and high levels of mutant streptococci the secondary risk factors are the dentinal caries frequent consumption of sweetened food poor oral hygiene and presence of any visible plaque so uh, in next slides in next few slides i'll be taking you through the different caries risk assessment forms that are available for basically for the children who are less than 6 years old of age so the ada uh, the caries risk assessment form actually um, uh, assesses the factors that is the contributing conditions the general health conditions and the clinical conditions so under contributing factors they check for the fluoride exposure sugary factors and uh, they, whether they are eligible for any government programs because this is american uh, the, uh, this form is for the american uh, from the american dental association so they will be eligible for a lot of uh, government uh, funded programs uh, that's why they have included this component in their caries risk form. And uh, the next is the clinical conditions like uh, 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 whether there is any cavitated lesions or any missing teeth or any visible plaque. So this is the caries risk assessment form given by ADA. So the next we will go to the camera that is the caries management by risk assessment. Uh, this uh, is published in California um, Canadian Journal. Uh, so they basically divide the risk factors as I uh, mentioned in my previous slides as risk factors, protective factors and disease indicators. Again, that is risk factors based on the clinical examination. As I said before, the risk factors based on the biological or predisposing factors like mother is having any active lesions whether the child is having uh, is uh, bottle fed um, then the child sleeps with the uh, bottle or nighttime feeding so all these factors are are taken into consideration in the camera again the protective factors like fluoridated water fluoridated uh, toothpaste then uh, the child has received any professional uh, uh, fluoride treatment so the balance between these two so uh, the the um, the clinician actually the ticks or the circles the these factors so the balance between these um, the protective factors and the risk factors gives the uh, idea whether the child belongs to a high risk category or a low risk category so this slide is again the modification of camera which is given in 2021 again uh, the um, here uh, the modification is like the again the risk factors that the biological risk factors uh, the protective factors and the clinical examination and the disease indicators are again taken into the domain and you we need to like tick uh, or, or score them in this uh, uh, form whereas in the previous form we used to tick whether it is yes or no in the new form in the new camera it is like you have to score them like if you check uh, for example if we use the frequency of snacking if it is more than three times daily in the, if the mother tells yes then you have to just put a score of plus two here then at the end you have to uh, add the total score for the co column and the score is given based on like if the total score is between minus four to 
minus 1 then the child belongs to the low risk category that is if there, there are protective factors and very few or no risk factors or no disease indicators are there for the child if the total score is between 0 to plus 3 then the child belongs to a moderate caries risk and if the uh, score is between anywhere between plus uh, 4 to plus 13 then the child belongs to a high caries risk and if it is between um, more than uh, between plus 14 to plus 18, then the child belongs to a very high carious risk category. Whereas in the previous camera form, it was not based on the score. It was basically based uh, on the balance between the your protective and the risk and the uh, risk uh, risk factors, protective factors and the risk factors. And there was only three categories. That is the low, moderate, and high carious risk. Whereas the uh, latest camera, which is given in 2021, they belong to a low low risk, moderate risk, high end very high carious risk. So based on these carious risk, the self-management goals are being described to the uh, patient. Um, again, we'll go to the next uh, carious risk assessment form, particularly for the infants and uh, the toddlers that is given by the uh, American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry. Again, uh, the AAPD followed the, again, the risk factors protective factors and the clinical findings. Again, in the risk factors, it is like the uh, whether the care is care, caregiver has having a active carious lesions, whether they have a, a low socioeconomic status, whether the child is bottle fed and the frequency of sugar exposure. If all these are positive, then you have to just mark it as yes. Um, so if there is more yes, then they belong to the high risk category. Um, uh, more yes to the risk factor, then they belong to the high risk categories. Then if there are more yes to the protective factors, then they belong to a low risk category. Again, based on these uh, answers, they are uh, grouped as high, moderate and low caries uh, risk. So again, this uh, guideline has been modified and uh, it's been uh, revised in 2022. So again, they have adopted the camera uh, um, uh, uh, domains and they have incorporated to the AAPD. So again, uh, they have uh, classified into risk factors, uh, the behavioral, the risk factors, which is clinical, the protective factors and disease indicators. So based on the, if the, again, if the risk factors, um, that there are yes to more of the risk factors, then the child belongs to the high, high risk. And if the more yes to the protective factors, then, then the child belongs to the low risk category. So these are the carious risk assessment forms which are available particularly for the infants and the toddlers, okay? There are certain limitations for the carious risk uh, assessment. So the carious risk, the past carious experience is not particularly useful in young children um, because the, le the carious lesions may be more uh, important than the number of lesions. The low salivary flow is very difficult to measure and may not be relevant to the young children. The frequency of sugar consumption is hard to quantitate. The social demographic factors are just a proxy for the various exposures and predictive ability of the various risk factors across the lifespan and how the risk changes with the age has not been determined. And genomic level risk factors may account for a sus uh, substantial variation in the carious risk. So, however, the carious risk assessment forms and carious risk assessment are available for infant and toddlers. However, not they are not complete. We, um, and also, these uh, risk uh, assessment forms cannot be used at the community level because if we go to the at the epidemiological level, if we have to do the study, um, taking because most of the carious risk assessment form, they evaluate the um, mutants levels of the mother or the mutants levels of the child. So if the if the mutants level are high in the child, they they are categorized as the high carious risk, which cannot be done at the epidemiological level, like collecting the saliva and determining the uh, mutants levels at the epidemiological level might be difficult. So to overcome this, uh, there is a need for to modify the carious risk assessment forms, which are available to our needs and assess their validity and functionality. Uh, also, uh, these assessment, these carious risk assessment, they though they involved, they, though they uh, taken into consideration the enamel uh, defects, they did not consider the contact contact areas of the uh, primary dentition, which is more uh, uh, 
because the caries the caries incidence is very high in the contact areas rather than the occlusal surfaces so that also needs to be incorporated in the caries risk assessment form so though there are there are lot of shortcomings which needs to be um, um, addressed uh, when we are uh, developing a uh, indigenous caries risk assessment form so with this i end my presentation uh, um, i am very grateful to uh, dr muthu sir for providing an opportunity to talk in this uh, platform um, my regards to dr vignesh for pro for pro for all the help through the uh, conduct of this presentation and uh, i also acknowledge my regards to my university jss academy of higher education and research for providing all the facilities thank you so much